Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and yes, we're back with some more DDR5 overclocking on Intel 13th Gen, because I finally caught it on camera. The thing that I hate so much about the Intel memory controller. So, right now, you might see, okay, so 2,500% uh, HCI mem test, no errors, that's great. Uh, test mem5, 5 hours, 10 minutes of one Osmos V3, which according to some... DDR, uh, some overclockers is better for DDR5 than the Anta 77 Extreme preset. I honestly can't tell you if it is, because I've, well, you, you'll find out soon enough. But anyway, some people say it's better. I don't really think so, but eh. Um, I also don't have any proof of that, like, Anta 77 Extreme is better. Like, I, I, like, Test Mem 5 is one of those applications where it's like, it does work as a stress test. Like, it does catch errors on unstable overclocks, but it falls into the category of, like, I don't actually know if it's better than any other stress test because that's Im incredibly difficult to prove, especially with a memory controller as inconsistent as Intel's 13th Gen 1. Anyway, so, yeah, test mem 5, 5 hours, no problem. Uh, Y-Cruncher VST for an hour, then another hour, so 2 hours of Y-Cruncher VST, also no errors. There's no errors here in... Uh, hardware info for the Windows hardware error logging. Um, I also ran like a mixed Y Cruncher load for some 14,000 seconds, which it didn't catch any errors, so I just kind of stopped it because Y Cruncher sucks down a bunch of power and it wasn't really making any progress. So why 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 am I making it sound like this isn't a completely stable overclock? Considering like, look, two and a half thousand percent HCI, five hours of test mem five. Uh, two hours of Y Cruncher VST and then a 14,000 seconds of uh, mixed Y Cruncher, which is like, what, like four hours of mixed Y Cruncher. So, you know, you'd think like, oh yeah, this this is pretty stable, right? Well, uh, no, actually. No, it isn't. Because the, this is actually the second instance of, y, uh, of HCI mem tests that I ran. Because the test procedure was I ran one hour of uh, VST, because VST is, like, really quickly to get upset if your voltages aren't just right and your frequency's too high, that kind of thing. So VST, very easy for sort of not... Well, because VST doesn't necessarily catch, like, timing issues in my experience, but it does catch upset memory controller pretty consistently. Um, at least if the memory controller is very upset. Um... Anyway, so I ran VST, then I ran test mem5, because a lot of the time that tends to be a little bit more difficult to run than HCI, um, probably because the test is somewhat more dynamic, uh, depending on what preset you use, but generally I, I would say this this tends to be a bit more uh, all over the place in terms of like CPU load, memory controller load, than, than HCI. And then I ran 1000% of HCI, and I got one error. Just one. And I stopped the test, and then I decided to see if I could, you know, replicate that error. So I tried VST again, and VST was fine. I, I love the Intel memory controller. And so then I was like, okay, let's just run HCI for, like, way longer. Let's run it overnight. Because 1,000% of HCI at DDR5-7600 is only about five hours of runtime. So this isn't some crazy long stress test. Like, this is less than what you would get if you, you know, set up your overclock uh, and then go to sleep and then wake up. The next day you'd probably have, like, 1,500% or, or something approaching 2,000 uh, if you sleep for, like, eight hours. Um... And, uh, yeah, so I, I left it run, well, I left it run through the evening and then overnight. Two and a half thousand percent. No errors. Like, this is stupid. Because the, the thing is, like, and a lot of people might be like, oh, Bilzo, you know, you, you could just, like, uh, do this, you know, uh, and, and, you know, go play games with your 13th gen uh, Intel system. It's very fast and... And, like, stable enough, probably. Um, but the issue is, like, I don't daily current-gen Intel hardware, right? Like, my the system currently recording this video, my daily system, is a 3950X. Um, so I really have no way to judge how unstable this actually is. I do know it's definitely not stable, because there's an error here, within, like, five hours. Like, that is not stable. Okay, <laughs> like... Um... But, and, and so, you know, so yeah, no. And the thing is, like, when I do these stress tests, like, I'm not doing them for me. 
right? Like, I'm making these videos to help people overclock their systems, and I don't, I'm not going to hand out settings where I can't even prove if they're stable or not. I can't prove that this is stable, right? Because it literally has an error in it, right there. There's an error at a thousand percent. The fact that there's no errors in another two and a half thousand percent, that really isn't relevant, because, like, I don't know how, like, does that error show up once a day? Maybe once a week? Maybe sometimes it shows up multiple times, like, maybe it happens very frequently sometimes, and maybe, you know, like, if you run it, because th this is something I did run into with when I was, like, wasting time and effort trying to get DDR5-8000 to work, like, I ran into situations like I got an error at, like, 800%, and so I'd run the test overnight, and I'd get, like, six more errors in the next 2,000%, um, which is better than this, because this is absolutely, this is the worst, actually, no, this is not the worst thing I've seen so far. Um, I, no, this is, this is pretty well the first, the worst thing I've seen so far, where it's like, there's one error in, in like, three and a half thousand percent of, of HCI mem test, one error in a combined run, t like, if you combine the runtime of all the stress tests, it's like, basically a day, and there's one error. Uh, so, it's like, yeah, this, this, this is, this is not good. But the thing is, I've seen the same thing with test mem5. I, and I don't know if this was at like 7800 or at 8000, and it was on a different motherboard, where I ran a two hour, yeah, I ran like two hours of test mem5 and to 77 extreme. Um, and I got an error. I think it was just one error. It might have been, it was like one or three errors. It was like single digit errors. And so I was like, okay, is this like a. Like, is this something I could realistically fix? And so I just started another instance of test mem5, but this time, five hours, right? I was like, okay, let's double the runtime. It should get twice as many errors. Or maybe there's like a thermal buildup issue, like it should just spit out way more errors. The second instance didn't get any errors at all. There was no errors in the, like, it got th one error in two hours, and then no errors in the next five, and it's just like, why can't it just run? Right? Um, and yeah, and so here we have another example of exactly that behavior, where it's like, there's a one error in, like, not that long, and then there's no errors since, and it's just like, so, it's stupid. Like, this this is just completely freaking stupid. And the real kicker is, like, if I reboot the system, it might get less stable. I might never see the error again. But the issue is, like, if I'm, if I'm making videos that are supposed to help people overclock their systems, you know, like, one of the biggest complaints I see for memory overclocking from, from other, uh, like, in comments from other, and occasionally from other, like, tech, tech YouTubers is that, like, it causes a whole bunch of instability. And it's like, well, no, it doesn't if you stress test properly, right? If you if you actually test that your memory is stable across all operating conditions that you expect it to run in, so if you have a big power-hungry GPU, you should also test your memory while the GPU is at 100% load because GPUs like to cook the memory sticks because um, the memory is right behind the GPU, so, you know, that's not great. But... Uh, Especially if you have one of those pass-through cards, which is going to just dump hot air directly on the memory sticks, but... Anyway, uh... Yeah, like... Like, this is just... it's just stupid. Like, th this is why I don't really have any videos showing DDR5 at high speeds, because it's just not stable. I can't prove it's stable, because it does shit like this constantly. Right, where it just, like, it runs, it runs, it runs, and then it gets an error, and then it doesn't get any more errors, and then, like, and, yeah, and, I, like, if you have, like, a dedicated, you know, and if you're doing this to your own system, right, and I don't have a problem with it, you can run your two-hour stress test and then go play games and, and you know, like, I, I don't care. It's, that's a you problem, not a me problem, but I don't want to be handing out settings where I can't even prove if they're actually stable, Right? Um, and, and that's, that's basically it. I can prove that, like, DDR5-7200 is stable. Um, this would probably work just fine at 7466. Um, it would also perform basically the same at 7466. 
<laughs> but the problem is, if, like, this is on a Hynix ADI kit, right? This is a 7200CL38 uh, Kingston Hynix ADI kit. And this kit costs, twi like, basically, twi uh, it's not twice as much anymore, but it's, a like, a $200 memory kit. It is, like, if I drop this thing to 7466, it's going to be in the same performance range as that $130 MDI kit that I used in the previous video. It's like, and so you have this, like, re like, and, and and that's kind of the thing, is, like, the point of memory overclocking isn't that you buy a $300 kit where the XMP doesn't work. You buy a $100 kit, and then you beat the XMP of a $300 kit because the XMP sucks anyway, right? Like, that's the other thing, is if you use auto timings with your XMP profile, like, it's gonna be, tr performance is gonna be trash because the problem isn't the clock speed in terms of performance, it's the timings, Right? Um, and so th that's kind of the thing is just like, what is the point of high-end memory with Intel CPUs when it's just not freaking stable? Like, it just isn't. I've not been able to run, like, I even have a XMP7800 kit now, and it does the exact same thing as when I used the 7200 gigabyte kit or the 7200 Kingston kit and manually clock it to similar speeds. Like, the, the 7800 kit's XMP... Um, and, and at least G-Skill is very honest with their QVL. Their QVL for that memory kit has two mother, like three motherboards on it. The Tachyon, the Dark, and the Apex. They're the only three motherboards that G-Skill actually considers as able to run that memory kit. But even then, if your CPU is not good enough, it's not going to run. <laughs> like, it just won't. Um, or at least, well, it'll, it'll run, it just won't run stable. Um, and, and... That's kind of the thing. And, and like, fixing this kind of issue where you get an error every 12-ish hours, or not even, right? Because, like, this, in total, there's one error in 24 hours. Like, good luck troubleshooting th this issue, right? Um, and that's not also considering the fact that the me Intel memory controller can sometimes have retrain issues, where if you just reboot the system a few times, it just completely falls apart sometimes. Uh, though I've not run into that with... Well, I've not run into that at 7600, but above 7600. Uh, the other issue is, though, I don't have a ton of runtime at 7600, because when I was pushing for DDR5-8000, I was spending most of my time dealing with errors like this at, like, 7800, or at DDR5-8000. Um, and so it's just like, no. Nah. So I, I don't even know if this is... Like, this might be expected behavior for this CPU at 7600. Actually, I think I ran into the same issue with the dark at 7600, now that I say that, with the with the 13600K. Yeah, because I think, like, pretty early on in my attempt at doing DDR5-8000 with the dark, I finally got something where it was like, oh, it ran, it ran Y-Cruncher, it ran TestMem5, and then I was like, okay, I'll just run HCI overnight, and then I came back the next day and there was, like, three errors in HCI. After, like, 2,000%, there was three errors, and it was just like... Like, what the hell? <laughs> Why can't it just run? Because, and the thing is, like, HCI isn't even, like, super hot or anything. It's actually one of the coolest running memory stress tests that I use. And it just, it's like, it gets errors if you run it overnight at, like, 7600 or 7800 or or what really kind of whatever and it's just yeah like this this is just completely freaking stupid in my opinion um so yeah anyway that's kind of it for the video like i mainly wanted to just sort of show you why it is that i hate the 13th gen memory controller so much because i finally have it on camera because the in the past when i'd run into this i'd like i wouldn't bother recording a video because you know, it's like, well, what's the point of showing people, like, oh, yeah, this isn't stable, so what? Um, but the thing is, like, it just keeps happening, so here we are. This, this, this is what you can expect if you actually run stress tests for a really long time. Now, again, if it's your personal system and you don't have, like, super critical data on it or whatever, yeah, you can, you can run your stress test for two hours and call it a day or three hours and call it a day. And then when you randomly crash out of the game, uh, blame your memory overclock instead of the developers because it might actually be your memory overclock and not the developer's fault that your system is crashing out of the game. Um, but, uh, you know, like, 
Like, that, that's the thing, is, like, I don't daily a 13th gen system, so... And also, even if I did daily a 13th gen system, like, the fastest GPU I currently own is an RTX 2080. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be pretty GPU bottlenecked in a lot of uh, CPU intent. Yeah, I'd probably be pretty GPU bottlenecked in most gaming scenarios. But um, at least like most modern gaming scenarios. But anyway, where was I going with this? Yeah, so I can't really like... So like the idea of like, well, maybe this would be okay if it's like just a gaming system and you don't actually care about stability that much. Like, yeah, but I can't prove that. Like, there's just no way for me to prove that. So... That doesn't help me. Um, and so here we are. Um, in Intel's stupid inconsistent memory controller. It's, and, and the funny thing is, if I used my 13900K, which has an even worse memory controller, uh, well, I actually haven't run that CPU above 6800 with any amount of stability, because once I realized, wait a minute, this CPU requires even more work than my 13600K to work at 7200. And this chip already, like, this 13600K already is, like, kind of a workout to get 7200 stable. Because um, you need to dial in the PLL voltages, which takes a while. Like, that's not just something that happens on its own. You have to manually figure out exactly, like, ideal PLL voltages. Um... And I haven't done that with the 13900K yet. Um, and if I put, copy the settings off of this 13600K, well, they don't work. Uh, of course they don't. But the, 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 the 13600K at least, like, boots relatively high speeds quite easily. And if I'm just running benchmarks like this, chip can go up to 8400 pretty easily. Whereas the 13900K can't go over 8000 basically at all. Like, it'll boot 8000, which is, like, the stupidest part of the 13th gen memory controller, which is that... Every CPU I own can boot DDR5-8000, at least on some motherboards. None of them can run it with, like, any amount of stability. So, yeah, anyway, uh, I'm making this video way longer than it needs to be. But I guess, like, the takeaway here is just, like, just don't push the memory speed if you don't want to deal with instability. You can tune the timings. The timings don't cause issues. The speed does. The speed causes so many issues. Because the like I like I don't I don't even know exactly what's happening, because like it could be the memory I'm I'm you know what, it doesn't matter. Um like I don't know. I literally have no idea why that error is there. Um I don't know why it doesn't show up again. Um So yeah, um, I'm going to just end the video here. Anyway, so I guess uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this is somewhat helpful if you're dealing with uh, instability on Intel 13th Gen with, with a high-speed high, high memory kit, because uh, it's not just you. Uh, it's I'd say it's probably everyone, and the people who don't complain about it are just in denial. Um, or they just don't don't care um, that like the system isn't completely stable, which you know, depending on your use case, that might be completely fine. Like it's your system. I don't care if you get blue screens. I care if I get blue screens, and I I care if I tell somebody else to get blue screens. Okay, because that, that's what I I don't want to do that. Um, anyway, um, where was I going with this? Right, yeah, end of video. So thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store, uh, and, uh, the Bandcamp. So if you'd like to support the channel through, like, buying merch or my terrible music, there's, there's links to that down in the description below. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and goodbye.